Some time ago, I made a video about installing Arch Linux easily using an installer called Architect. Well, Architect, as of now, is dead. So some of you suggested to take a look at the Revenge installer for Arch Linux as an alternative to what Architect used to be. So today we're going to have a look at the Revenge installer and we're going to see if it is a good replacement for the old Architect installer. So guys, with no further ado, let's check it out. All right, so let's have a look at this Revenge installer here. I have the ISO, so let's make a new virtual machine and start it up and let's see how it does. So it apparently doesn't work with UEFI. All right, I, I'm, it's probably due to the fact that this is a virtual machine. So we're just gonna try and fall back to classic um, BIOS mode and that should work fine. So let's put revenge installer. And this time it seems to be working. Let's see if it actually does. All right. There we have it. That was pretty fast. Welcome to the revenge installer. Please ensure that you have an active internet connection. Of course, this should be a net install. If you need to connect to Wi-Fi, you may click on the network icon about the panel. That's really convenient. Thank you. If you're using a wire connection, network manager should automatically detect it and connect. When you have connected to the internet, click the yes button to proceed. If you want to, if you'd like to exit the installer, you may click no. To open a terminal, you use this as a rescue CD, hit control, alt and T. Now this is really convenient. Pretty cool. So it looks like we have, I think this is open box and this should be tint to the panel up here should be tint to. It's actually pretty nice. I like it. It's a nice setup. So tint to, yeah, tint to settings. I have some software here. So yeah, lift pad nitrogen for wallpapers, I think, and synapse. I even have synapse in this ISO. Now that's pretty weird. Synapse is like a, um, let me show you. Yeah, you see it's like a spotlight uh, search feature, but I'm not sure why I would want to use this in live CD, but whatever. I have Chromium, Zen Map. Now, this is pretty weird actually. Zen Map on a live installer. Settings, System, G Parted. Of course, this is really, this will be really useful. Avahi is a browser, XFC terminal, Qt. V4 L2 test utility icon browser. <laughs> okay, uh, this is actually pretty weird. We have a, a weird selection of stuff here. I guess this can be used as a normal live CD to do some rescue or just to have a um, live system right away if we wanted to. So sorry if I, the window was resized incorrectly. This is the tin two panel we have. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So let's just go ahead and press yes here and start the installer. Downloading the latest revenge installer. So apparently uh, there's a feature similar to what we get in Antergo so um, that the installer downloads the latest version before actually running. And that's really convenient. So next you will be prompted with a series of questions that will guide you through installing Arch Linux. You will be asked if you want to use manual or auto partitioning. If you select auto partition, the drive that you select will be completely deleted. Now this is actually something we could try and see how it actually works. And Arch will be installed. If you select manual, you will have the opportunity to partition the disk yourself and select which partitions to use for installation. Click yes to begin or no to exit. All right, um, I usually always do manual partitioning, but just for the sake of seeing how the installer works, let's do automatic partitioning. Below is the list of available drives in your system. SDA disk, 20 gigs, that's fine. We want these as our system hard drive, so it's okay. We have to select it, press okay. Well, and this will erase all your data in the SDA. Yes. 
And now the actual installation begins. So we select the locale language, EN US is fine. Keyboard layout, uh, US, yes, of course. Country zone, so Europe, okay. Italy, Rome, yeah, Rome, where is Rome? There we go, pretty good. UTC or local time? UTC, okay. Revenge VBox for the host name. It's actually pretty nice, I like this installer. A username, so you're just gonna use Gapmus. Press OK. Root password. What? Wait. Password for Gapmus. All right. So this is actually pretty similar to what we get with Architect, but with a graphical user inter interface instead of Anchors. And the second thing I actually I actually like. I like the way it's done. It's pretty pretty straightforward and simple to use. If you are advanced enough, you will have no problem using this installer. Even if you're a newbie, I think this should be fine. I'm not quite sure. So there are several kernels available for your system. And we have a nice selection of kernels. So you have Linux, Linux LTS, Linux GR SAC focused on security. It contains the GR security patch set and packs for increased security. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can use this. The Linux Zen kernel is a result of the collaboration of kernel hackers to provide the best possible kernel for everyday systems. I actually never heard of this. I'm just gonna go with Linux. All right. The range installer has detected that you're running in VirtualBox. Oh, that's very nice. Would you like to install VirtualBox utilities to the installed system? Yes, thank you very much, actually. Would you have to install support for the Arch user repository, Yort? Well, yes, thank you. That's another nice option. Actually, I prefer to use PackHour for my AUR helper, but Yort is fine. I can install PackHour from there. Okay. Would you like to install printer support? Why, yes, thank you. What desktop would you like to install? So we have quite a selection here. Uh, these look like groups to me. So there are like um, different choices depending on which kind of desktop you want to use. Now I'm far too familiar with GNOME and I know that the installation takes some time because there's so much stuff to be downloaded. We're just gonna go with Plasma KDE applications for this install, just for the sake of it. So if you would like to select more application to install, please uh, choose the category from the, oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. We can install extra applications along with our system. And that's what I usually do when I install from the command line. I usually do packstrap and then the uh, base, base devil, and all the other stuff that I need uh, and th this is just how I would do it. This is just how I would install Arch from the command line. That's really a nice thing. Now I'm getting to like this Revenge installer. It's it's really cool. So we're just gonna install MPV for once. So we have some uh, pretty nice selection of software, but apparently we do not we do not have everything here. I don't know. That's a bummer. Uh, what happens if we press cancel? No, we're just gonna press OK. Um, utilities, maybe something I can use. HTOP, sounds like a nice thing to have. All right. And TFS 3G, that's really useful. So you do not get every application you could possibly be installing here, but just the basics that you may need on a new installed system so if you need anything else, you can just go ahead and install it yourself after the installation is done. This is a decent approach. I, I kind of like it. It's kind of the way um, that Ubuntu Mate does it, or Ubuntu Mate. I, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce Mate or Mate. I'm just going to pronounce it Mate for now.
It's kind of the way that Ubuntu Mate does it with the software boutique. They offer some common used software right away for you to install. And that's actually an approach I like. So we're just gonna head, we're just gonna go for htop here. And for internet, we're gonna install, gonna install Copzilla. Okay, finished. Okay, would you like to install the bootloader? The answer is, to this is usually yes, unless you're dual booting and plan to have another system handle the boot process. Again, nice options. I really respect whoever has done this installer. They, they had everything in mind. So I'm just gonna go for yes and install a bootloader to dev SDA. It even has to see me where to install it. Please click yes to begin the installation. Click no to abort installation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yes. All right, so it is installing. It's gonna probably take a while for everything to be downloaded. So we're gonna check back when it's done. All right, so it finished installing. So we can just press okay here and restart the computer. And it put it in the installer again. So we're just gonna power it off, go to the settings, storage, revenge, and remove the disk. Okay. We're gonna start it up again. There we go. We have a grub here. So let's just put Arch Linux. Just standard Arch Linux grub. I'm pretty confident this is actually a nice vanilla installation. All right, so uh, there are some resolution problems. Possibly when I log in the session, everything will be fine. So we have S SDDM, I think it's called, the KD Login Manager. Just gonna enter the password here and log in and see what happens. Ooh, fancy. All right, there we have it. Here's our installed system. So this is of course KD Plasma 5. Um, let's actually go to system settings and see what version we are running. Okay, information about the system. <clears throat> so Arch Linux, KDE Plasma version 5.9.3, Framework 5.32. All right, so this actually looks pretty polished. Let's see what applications we have pre-installed. Oh, and let's let's actually open up a terminal. Uh, should be here. Scrolling doesn't work particularly well in VirtualBox system. Terminal, there we go. So let's actually see if we have htop installed. Of course we do. So this is our system, pretty cool. So we have a decent selection of applications here. Of course we have Dolphin and, and all the uh, standard. So the system settings, console, Kate or Kwrite. I'm not sure we have Kate and we probably have Kwrite too. Yeah, we do have. Okay, right too. So we have quite some things here. Of course, this is utilities, so we have quite some utilities. We have timer, K okay, timer, and possibly all the KDE base uh, stuff. We have some things for the education. That's sharing, feed reader. We have quite some stuff here. And Kubezilla, of course, we installed that too. And of course, it works fine. Let's just try to go to. Let me show you something pretty cool. And it seems to be working fine. All right. Yeah. So we do have all our applications here. 
EKD plasma desktop. Pretty cool. So guys, this was Arch Linux Revenge Installer. I think it's a really nice alternative to what the old architect used to be. If I can say it, I think it's actually better than architect in a way that we have more software built into the ISO. So we have more possibilities for recovery and running a live system overall. It's also pretty lightweight considering it's based on open box. And as you see, um, installing the system was really simple. We have a fully working plasma desktop right here. And I'm really, really surprised by the results of this, of this installer. I, I really didn't know it, if I can be quite honest with you. I didn't know that it was a thing and I am glad that you suggested to review this because now I know another great way to install Arch Linux easily. So before concluding this video, I just want to make a quick announcement. I finally opened a TechPills website. So just go ahead, open your browser and go to techpills.technology and check it out. Let me know what you think. It's not really 100% done yet in the sense that I have still to implement some things and fix some other things, but it's there for the most part. So if you're a fan, check it out. You can even leave a comment in one of the articles if you feel like it. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.